So before this very PG-rated movie began, in a theater filled with children, the theater accidentally ran all of the trailers that were supposed to be attached to a more adult film. These were just some of the moments that I shared with a bunch of small infants. What happened to him? He cut his wrist. Why is dream sex way better than real sex? Because they come when you want them to. Girl, that is so true. You're saying the person trying to kill you is in the room right now. You don't have to worry, you're a pretty little head. My head is not little. It's just that my breasts are humongous. Review Jojo Rabbit, they said. Review The Irishman, they said. No, says I. I will review the new American classic, directed by the auteur Andy Fickman, helmer of such classics as Who's Your Daddy? She's the Man. The Game Plan. Race to Witch Mountain. You again. Parental Guidance. Paul Blart Mall Cop 2. Kevin James Never Don't Give Up and playing with fire. How could I possibly review a film from Martin Scorsese or Taika Waititi when a film like this is out in theaters right now? Fuck. Side note, I am reviewing both of those movies very soon. Jojo Rabbit probably tomorrow and Irishman when it comes to Cleveland on November 11th. That's when my screening is. I haven't seen it yet. I have no way to see it until then. But today we're talking about Playing With Fire, a new film starring John Cena, which is about a firefighter and his crew who rescue three children from a burning house. And they bring them back to the fire station to await their parents' arrival. And when their parents don't show up, they have to care for these kids for a few days. And they're quite a handful. And that's the movie. <laughs> it's, it's really good, I must say. What was it about the story that hooked you? Oh, it's a good tale. And I think uh, that's, to me, it, it doesn't... I'll explain a scene that happens in this movie so you can understand exactly what type of film it is. John Cena is asleep in his bunk bed in the firehouse. And a kid comes up and wakes him up. It startles him, so he shoots upwards in bed, hits his head on the top bunk, and because of that small jostling of the bunk, the entire bunk collapses onto him. Spider fluid! Oh. Again, again! Oh. That's the the movie. That's 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 the film. The whole movie. That's like that. And it's a new American classic, I must say. What? What? You're going to be able to bring your kids and they're going to laugh because there's poopy stuff and soapy stuff and slipping and falling. While John Cena is trying to take care of these kids, the littlest amongst them warns him that she's got to take a poo-poo. Boom boom. Boom boom, what's boom boom? <laughs> don't look at me. <laughs> don't, don't do it or I'm gonna. <laughs> and we're greeted with the first of many scenes revolving around poop which is obviously the highlight of this movie. Children, I'm sure, are going to really love all of the poop scenes. They're going to laugh because there's poopy stuff. Not only do they have to have an entire scene in which John Cena wears a fireman's outfit that is supposed to keep nuclear particles out of his gas mask, but cannot combat this child's shit smell, we get a second scene where John Cena, I'm laughing, but it's great, trust me, is trying to take a shit in the forest but the child does not want to leave his sight. So he must hold the child like this, right in front of his face, staring into the child's eyes while he shits. Trust me, this is the pinnacle of entertainment today. The film also has an entire subplot dedicated to My Little Pony. My little pony, my little pony. Which was another great thing that I experienced in the theater today. In fact, a lot of them have to sit down and watch My Little Pony with the kids. And they like it so much that they continue to talk about it. They talk about Equestria and all of the wishes of the various characters in the show. And there's a really tall, bald guy with a beard. He's very grizzled and manly. They call him Axe because he always carries an axe around. But he doesn't talk. He never speaks. They never hear him say a word. Even though he probably had to go through a very difficult and strenuous training regimen to get to be a firefighter, and he probably had to say some things and do applications and go to interviews, they never hear him say anything. Until, of course, he opens his mouth and sings an operatic version of the My Little Pony theme. No, I'm not kidding. That is in the movie. And, uh, that happened. Don't look at me. 
Don't, don't do it or I'm gonna... If I were to realistically talk about issues with this flawless movie, John Cena has four shirtless scenes in this children's film. And I think if I was 10 years old, I would have wanted to see his nipples a lot more than that. Especially since they're so veiny and hard and boisterous. I think audiences will very much enjoy when John Cena takes his shirt off. That's actually right. <laughs> I think as a child, I, I would have preferred to see a lot more of those nipples. That's probably my only real issue with the movie. I'm having so, I'm having such a hard time keeping a fucking straight face. Realistically, uh, this is a really, really terrible movie, but I don't really think it's much of a surprise considering the filmography that I listed before doing this review, considering the plot and the fact that this is very obviously an attempt for John Cena to perhaps reach a wider demographic towards younger kids. The Rock did it with The Game Plan, one of the movies that I just mentioned this guy directed as well, and The Tooth Fairy, which he didn't direct. There's always this attempt when you're like uh, transitioning from one thing to another to try to appeal to the broadest demographic as possible. John Cena was also in Blockers, which was a more adult comedy that I actually had some laughs. He was pretty funny in that movie. Here, this is like the most prepackaged, odd 2003 movie I've ever seen. This film feels like if you were four years old in 2003, that's the demographic for this movie. Oh, wait, what? It's a slapstick family comedy where people get thrown into walls and poop explodes onto people's faces and a child grabs a fire hose and gets flung all around the room. They really don't make too many movies like this anymore, so if you love those 2003 shitty slapstick comedies, then this movie is right up your alley. When I review a family movie that's aimed at kids, I try to look at it and be realistic in the fact that it's obviously not for me and it's easy to hate on a film like this. I talked about that in my review of uh, Dora and the Lost City of Gold. I remember saying like, mo most kids are probably gonna really like this, and that film was actually working pretty hard to entertain children. It's not a bad family movie. It's really not, even though it's really easy to like meme on that movie. With Playing With Fire, I actually think a lot of kids are gonna be really bored by this. There's a romantic subplot with John Cena and Judy Greer. There's all these weird random shirtless scenes, one of them where he's in the shower like scrubbing himself. I'm not seeing little kids being all that interested in that. And I would say the movie's biggest actual problem is that there really isn't that much firefighting in it. There's very little firefighting, which I think is potentially the best thing for a kid to see who's young, to see like these heroic figures in the, in the movie being firemen and, and actually like doing things that real firefighters do but there's such a superhero edge to the way it's shown. They like fall out of the sky with epic music. They even refer to themselves as superheroes at one point. It's not taken seriously at all, and that's kind of a missed opportunity to show kids just how great firefighters really are, because they kind of just make them look like cartoon characters which is a disservice to the actual work that's being done. And Judy Greer's character is a scientist that's obsessed with toads. And John Cena is a firefighter who's obsessed with fire. And so as these characters come closer together, they have to like struggle over talking about toads and fire. And I'm just seeing all these small infants like drool hanging out of their mouths, just fucking bored out of their goddamn minds. I was right there with you, kids. I've been in family stuff. I've been in more adult stuff. I've been in animated stuff. I've been in action stuff. I've been in drama stuff. Uh, I think that the common thread between all that material is I, I enjoy the story, and this was no different. I just enjoyed the the voyage of the kids and the smoke jumpers and the whole movie of it all. And I think it's going to really play out well on screen. There's poopy stuff and soapy stuff. I've been sitting here for like two minutes. How how can I even grade this? I can't grade this movie. It's too perfect. The film is going to inspire generations. When, when I sit down and think about the movies that I want to make, I think about movies just like this. I think I can't wait to set up a camera where John Cena rips off a My Little Pony shirt. That is exactly what I want to do with my life. 
That's the legacy that I want to leave behind. How can I grade a movie that, that's that flawless, that understands exactly what I want to do? How? How can I possibly grade a movie like that? It's, it's just not possible. This film is ungradable. It's too good. You'll stand up and cheer. It's so good. You will actually stand up and cheer. That's how fucking good this movie is. <laughs> Jesus. If I were grading this movie out of a pure like meme level of enjoyment, it's like a 10 out of 10 perfect flawless. I loved it. I laughed so hard at so many parts and I'm sure that the people around me thought, wow, that guy is really entertained by this shitty movie. His his standards must be really low, but I was just having the time of my life. Um, as an actual film, it's obviously an F, but I just don't want to grade it. I don't. This is a this is a hilariosity. Fuck it. This is a hilariosity. I'm not going to call it that, though, because I don't have the clips. I can't show you any footage. I can't really dissect the movie, but damn, I want to. I don't grade hilariosities, and that's what this movie is. That There, I'm satisfied now, because I can't grade it. It's too perfect. Guys, thank you so much, as always, for watching. I am going to review Jojo Rabbit this weekend, probably tomorrow or the next day, and I'm seeing The Irishman on the 11th. Really, obviously, really excited for that one. Guys, thank you so much, as always, for watching. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.